Hello and welcome. Now in the last video what we did was we imported the rest of the controls for our desk and we animated them. Now uh, it's time to take them into uh, the uh, control values of the blueprint. But first, I've made a couple of changes that you might have noticed. Uh, one of them is I've separated these controls a bit. So if you remember from before, uh, they were a bit closer together. And if you see one video after another, you might notice it. Uh, I had to move them apart because they actually met in the middle uh, as, uh, as I went up a gear. Uh, so I had to move them apart. Second one. Uh, actually, there was about three changes. Second one is I replaced this material, uh, and instead of having neutral there, I made it off because I felt that was uh, more uh, likely to be the case. Uh, neutral, unless you had it really spelt out, it looked very awkward as a abbreviation. So I just put off, uh, and that looks better now. Um, Another one there, which you may have noticed, wasn't there before, is this switch. I imported the switch, um, a rotary switch, because when I um, want to look at uh, headlights, uh, I want to be able to uh, have a freeway switch. So I, I chose to put a rotary type switch there rather than the on-off switch uh, of this uh, panel here. Um, so that's that. And one last thing is that when I uh, tested it out in um, in Transim, uh, the colours were all over the place. Um, and uh, even though um, I put underscore NM at the end of the texture file, um, it didn't seem to work as I expected it to work. When you do that, stroke NM, it's telling TrainSim not to compress the texture file. Um, and with something that's only four pixels by four pixels, you can't afford it to compress because it interpolates uh, to, to uh, get the compression. And of course, it will just blur all the colors uh, together. So uh, I, I've tried it before and it works okay. Didn't work this time, so I thought I'm not going to muck around. Let's go for a 16 by 16 uh, pixel texture, and that's fine. That works okay. You just swap it over in your. Let me um, uh, let me pick on one here. Uh, in your texture here, uh, you just swap this over from uh, the original uh, texture, which was palette number one to palette number two. That's included in the uh, on the Google Drive. Uh, and you shouldn't have to alter your UVs, it should pick it up straight away. So that's the changes made uh, from the last video to what you're seeing on the screen now. So now it's time to go into the blueprint editor. Here we are in the blueprint editor. Before we start setting these control values, uh, let me just say about the gearing. We need to make sure that our uh, simulation uh, blueprint uh, is set for gears so um, if we click onto that which was wooden loco sim there uh, and we need to make sure it's a diesel mechanical uh, subsystem uh, we select that to here add element and it says what type of system it is so we we've selected a diesel mechanical uh, and uh, down here um, where it says power unit, we've gone for a diesel geared power unit. So uh, there we go. I, I've just selected another one. I'll get rid of that. So let's just delete that. But we've selected diesel geared power unit. Um, now, with this one, we get a gearbox. It, down here, it says gearbox. And if we open up the gears, uh, here are our gears. We add these, just add element that will add the different gears, however many gears we want. Uh, and this tells us what uh, is the top, the top speed, top value of the gear. So, for instance, first one here, the maximum speed is 15 miles an hour, which means at 15 it stops and you need to change up. 
to uh, the next gear and the next gear here will go to 27 miles an hour and then you change up again now it's got uh, with these um, gears the maximum tractive effort uh, associated with uh, the gear uh, now unless you've got a railway engineering degree uh, you're not necessarily going to know what this is so you're going to have to uh, just go to a sample file to get these figures uh, from there uh, I'm sure they'll be written down somewhere in the in the uh, uh, engineering books of uh, the different uh, different classes uh, but uh, your guess is as good as mine so you need a sample and get those values obviously you've got a sample with this one uh, that you can use as a value for your tractive effort so that's it that's the gears make sure you've got that set make sure as i say it's a diesel mechanical system and it's a geared power unit so that said let's go over here because the first one we're going to do is rpm so here we go control values uh, and the first one come to that's of interest to us is this revolutions a minute and we've said default value 375 minimum value 375 and maximum value 1000 now we set the animation to go from about minus 120 to plus 120 so uh you know you might take that as being going from naught to whatever the top value is and here we've got a thousand so it goes from naught to a thousand but in fact we've said no the minimum value is 375 now why we've said that is if we look at this power unit it says that it idles at 375 so that's what it sits at and then as you increase the throttle the rpm goes up to a value of 800 now why uh, I've put a thousand there is because I don't want the needle to go all the way round. You, if you remember from the, uh, let me go back from the uh, image here, we've got this yellow band here. Uh, so I don't want it to go much above there, and it, it sort of shows where you're changing up and changing down. So, with that said. Uh, let me uh, go back with that said I, I've set that to a thousand which will limit 800 just about comes on to the edge of the uh, yellow uh, top end of the yellow now you could do the same at the bottom end so at the moment I'm saying the minimum value is 375 so when it idles it's actually at the minus 120 mark um, if you want to just go across that yellow range then if you lowered this value 375 would sit further up so in other words the default value uh, and the minimum value uh, it, it won't go below 375 revs so it will never go back down to the 120 so if you wanted to go that yellow uh, across that yellow uh, bit if you lowered this minimum value uh, then that will force the needle to sit in idle at a higher part of the uh, of the travel so uh, you you can just change this value till you get the needle just at the bottom end of the yellow so you could have the needle just going across the yellow section I've left it but if you prefer that because that's probably more realistic you drop down uh, this end of the yellow and then you change gear and go back up again so um, I'll, I'll leave it at that for now but you can play about with that if you want um, so let's have a look at uh, that we've set those so they're okay uh, make sure uh, when you come to do controls you need these names filled in so we'll do that when we've got the throttle setting the throttle and things like that now interface elements you've got different elements here different types of switches and uh, uh, levers and things like that you haven't got one for a dial so we generally just use an interior lever and uh, yeah we've got an element name there we go, rpm dial that's fine uh, and pick transform name we'll leave that for the moment but I'll tell you about that when we get on to the animations of the uh, the actual throttles and things uh, sensitive movement type yeah left to right or the dial that's what it's doing so we'll accept that uh, movement type sensitivity now sensitivity is uh, when you're uh, pressing a key or 
uh, you're moving your mouth it's how it's reacting to that how quick it's reacting to that so uh, the um, the sensitivity I make sure I get this the right way round if I get it wrong <laughs> Oh, you'll know because I'll put up a caption. Um, but uh, yeah, if it if it's lower, it's more sensitive. If it's higher, it's less sensitive. Um, as I say if a caption comes up now, <laughs> you know I got it the wrong way round. Um, right, animation name. So uh, there we go. So we want uh, this is. Uh, we said it's the RPM, isn't it? So let's just copy that and we paste that in there. So there we go. So that one is finished with the output interface cab. We leave it at cab. Uh, and that one's fine. So let's move down a bit. Now we've got our brake uh, pressures here. Now, uh, I've already set these. Now, these go from 0 to 30. The, if you uh, go back, if we go back and look at the dial, it goes from 0 down here to 30 up there. So we're going from 0 to 30 in our travel. The default value, which we find from here, if we go up to the brake, train brake here, uh, and uh, let's uh, drill down, as they say, it says maximum cylinder pressure is 21. Uh, so that's where this comes from, 21. So we're not going fully to the top. Uh, this will stop at 21. That'll be the maximum. Uh, and then it drops. Uh, when you uh, when you apply the brakes, that will drop down uh, to the minimum value, which is naught. Okay, so that's fine. We've got uh, the uh, the name in there. That's fine. Again, the names here not so important at the moment, but they will do when we uh, look at uh, the controls. Uh, so interface elements. Okay, we've got uh, a lever again because it's a dial. So let's open the lever up and uh, we've already got this one in which is the chamber that's the first one uh, and we've left the sensitivity at one one we probably won't have to alter the sensitivity it's more for the controls like the throttle and that that we would want to, to change that sensitivity so that one's okay uh, and uh, this is already set and the, the next one's set as well uh, which is exactly the same the only difference is here is a different animation name this is the pipe uh, and this is needs changing I can see that's at zero zero that wants uh, one one uh, the stop go by the way difficulty type this is for intermediate and expert stop go is uh, right the way through from um, so this particular control will be there whether you've got it in expert mode or intermediate mode um, where it says stop go only, that's only if you're in the novice mode, shall we say. Um, but stop go will go, this will appear in all of those levels. Okay, so that's the next one. Headlights. Now we'll leave that. We don't, we will alter that when we come to do the headlights. Start up, yeah, that's our switch, isn't it? So uh, let's have a look at this. The name, yeah. Default value zero, yeah, that's off. Uh, minimum value is off uh, and in fact it's the other way around the, the, the default so it means it starts off uh, and the minimum value is going to be zero and the maximum one so off or on uh, and uh, now we might want to use these we might want to switch these so let's uh, uh, let's give these names uh, there we go so where it's asking for names, localized control name, make sure you put what uh, it, it will be. Because that is the name that will come up when you hover over the, the, uh, the particular control, is that name you put up here. Um, so, element name is start, um, let's put start up, it's more like it. Now, I've already put one in there. Uh, but let's get the animation which is start um, so let's look for that animation uh, somewhere there oh there we go start so copy and paste that in there now this is uh, a notched lever at the moment uh, I've done that you might want to do it differently now you can have uh, a notch lever which will be 
um, like our uh, gear lever where it's five notches uh, and you can say rest in that place once I move it rest there and stay there um, so that's fine you can use that for a switch or you could just make this a push button now the advantage of a push button is you can tell it to auto release now doesn't really matter for this one but where you might want to uh, press a button and then it, it presses and then comes out again and often with an ignition or a start you you would do that you would have it releasing going back but that would be a push button whereas this is a switch which you'd expect to stay on so you can leave that one as uh, a lever or a notched lever uh, there's no advantage there in which one you use sometimes the levers are not so easy to grab with your mouse so sometimes it is easier to make it a push button so that you just click on it and it switches and then you click on it again and it switches back so I'm going to in fact make it a push button but first let's pick a transform name now that is what it is called in Blender. So if I look down here, we've got, there we go, switch one, and it's called switch body one. That's that. So that is our transform name. So we need that there in order that it recognizes that uh, it, we can use it as a mouse control. If you don't have anything there, you won't be able to grab it with your mouse. So you've got to have what the node is. The blender node and that's what that one is um, so uh, again let's call this starter there we go and again let's get that start uh, one there pace now we don't want it to auto release we want it to stay on so we'll leave that and now we can just delete that one there we go and leave it as a push button uh, I just find with, with a small switch like that it's sometimes difficult to try and grab it with the mouse it's easy to just click on it okay so that's the uh, yeah that's the starter okay next one's gonna be uh, the horn now there we go default value zero minimum value zero and maximum value one now i was going to have it in three positions high and low but i haven't got a high and low uh, um, web file anyway uh, so i thought no just make it uh, just make it uh, switch on or off so that's what i'm going to do it's going to be naught or one uh, now interface element now i've got here an interior lever um, so we can grab it and swing it across to uh, make the the horn go but this now may be where we say we want it to auto release so we want to grab it and move it across and then when we take our finger off the mouse it goes back to where it was and that is more uh, what we want from this so if we add uh, a, an element a push button uh, okay that um, and uh, here we're going to say yes auto release so we'll get rid of this one and let's uh, this is horn isn't it oh let, let me just uh, make sure we've got something in there horn lever in fact uh, so I'll do it the same there we go okay transform name again this is horn lever I know uh, in blender that's what that element is called it's horn lever so horn lever there we go and uh, let's get the animation the horn and copy and paste it so now this uh, we should be able to move it across and it should auto release once we take let go of it it will go swing back which is what we want okay so that's it that's that one done so here we go regulator another name throttle which is a throttle 
uh, and let's have a look so interface element here so these are all just straightforward Norton one it goes from minimum to maximum so a straightforward lever will work here so there we go and again the node name in blender is throttle and so I've already loaded the throttle IA in there so that's fine so that's it for that one uh, sensitivity I'm going to just leave them as one one if you find it's not moving all that quickly or whatever uh, then you can play about with those and uh, just see what is the best now reverser this is the first of our uh, multi element if you like it's not a naught to one it's not a swing it's one two three so here with the reverser then default value is going to be naught now naught is going to be our off position then we're going to have a minimum which is minus one that's going to be reverse and maximum is one that's going to be forward okay so here we go here's our let's call this reverser that's it uh, and let's add an interface I think I've probably already got one and this is going to be an irregular notched so it's a notch so it's got three notches okay so I click on this and you'll see if I click here you'll see different types of notch you've got an irregular notch lever and an interior notch lever now I advise to use the irregular one for a reason I'll tell you um, so I've already put in the uh, the information there which is the rev uh, animation uh, the node in blender is called rev handle uh, and it says rest in notch position so we want it clearly to be three set notches uh, and display notch name now that will mean that in the um, HUD instead of going from 0 to 100% which is what it would do naturally this is going to go reverse off forward um, after this notch these notch names so down here it's got notch there we go and all we do is we click on that and we add notch data and we want three lots of notch data because we've got three notches first one identifier is rev that's reverse and that is minus one that's what we were saying earlier uh, next one is off and that value is zero and then finally it's forward and that value is one so these are, are what uh, this notch name these are what they will be rev off and forward okay so that's the notch data so that's it so that's that one that's the reverser then all set um, next one is going to be the train brake control now we've got a default value of 0.7 and a minimum value of 0 I this starts with the brake on so um, the, the, the you know which you'd expect the brake to be on you don't want it to suddenly shoot off as it did originally uh, with the first uh, one I I created uh, earlier on uh, so default value 0 0.7 so it's, it, it's held with break on minimum value zero yes that's release and maximum value one that's fully on in fact that's emergency is one uh, so come down here yeah localized name should be train break yeah that's fine uh, interface elements now again it's an irregular notched lever just like our reverser but this isn't set in notches in the same way um, you know th this this is still a continuous movement around uh, so to speak um, so again same thing um, but what we're not going to do is display the notch name and we could leave off the rest in notch position because um, you may not necessarily want it as a notched lever you may want it just as a continuous lever but 
in the HUD it will show you at what uh, point the control is in because you will want to uh, ease that that uh, that brake uh, back and forward if you like as you're coming into stations so you might want to take off the rest in notch position and just leave it for you to uh, sort of swing swing it right round okay so you just deselect that the same thing here is we have the notch data which gives us uh, the point at which the notches come in so here from 0 is release from point 0.3 it's from 0 to 1 point 0.3 it's the self lap then we come to suppression at 0.85 continuous service at 9 0.9 and the emergency at 0.95 then sl you've slammed it into emergency okay so you've still got that sense of notches of, as it goes round it will show what's happening um, but you don't necessarily want to want it to sit there or you may do it depends it depends some are uh, notched uh, others aren't others are just a, a swing that's up to you what you think looks best um, all right speedometer we've done handbrake we're not going to do um, and uh, yeah, I, the sensitivity here, I'm going to go for 1-1 one, one again. We can see. And again, the transform name, brake lever, that's what it's called in in uh, uh, Blender. Right, okay. So, last one is this gear lever. So, gear lever, default value is 0. And minimum value is 0. And maximum value 4. I.e. there's 5 steps. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 which is five steps okay so yeah that's fine again localized name gear lever that's what will we'll, we'll show up when you hover over it uh, and uh, you don't need to uh, fill those in Th this is where whether this applies to the consist and some things do so if you've got another cab further down or, or whatever you know uh, you might want uh, the train brake to apply to both so you, you'd apply it to the consist as well um, interior notch lever so this is a notch lever this is not an irregular one this is just a notch lever so this will be in notches but we don't need notch date here we don't we're not naming the notches um, so we can just use an ordinary interior notch lever uh, and element gear transform name is uh, I think gear lever so let's put that in gear lever and the animation name let's uh, find it it's there gear copy and paste that and we just tell it here to rest in the notch positions because we do want it to sit in those fixed positions uh, and the number of notches are five so that's it we don't need that notch data we just tell it it's five notches and sit, rest in that position so that's it so that is all of the control elements uh, and all we need to do now is go into uh, train sim and check that all this is working but first we need to save this out so I'm gonna do that and I will see you in train sim here we are in train sim there is our loco let's click on that and let's go into cab view number one and let's just have a look at the cab so all looks okay gear lever throttle horn lever and ah I may not have set that one properly yep so I need to uh, go and check I put the name in oh there it is it is there train break yep <laughs> it's all it's working I just didn't have it in the right place so that's fine uh, I don't know if I put a name here but this is why these are quite awkward at times these ones um, but to be honest as well for things like that I generally will use uh, the HUD 
uh, to switch on and off. So let's have a look. Let's see if things are working as we expect them to work. So let me take the train brake off. Yes, it comes off. The dials go up to 21. Uh, there, fine. Let's do it with my mouse. Yes, I can control it with the mouse. That's fine. So let's make sure that's off. Um, gears, let's see if I can alter the gears. Yeah, I can. I can alter the gears there. That's fine. Uh, let's check. I've got control of the throttle. Yep, got control of the throttle. And the horn is that push button. I just click on it. And back it goes to that position. And this should be the same, I think. Did I, make, I can't remember if I made that a, uh, a push button. I got a feeling I did originally, but when I exported it out, I don't think I did. So that's why that's not working. And we should have a switch there, headlight switch which uh, yes i can move that to uh, three different positions there and in fact i can click here and move the switch there we go so that's the case it looks all right looks all right so let's get going i'm going to use the hud here so i've got the uh, i've got that off oh i didn't check the uh, yet yeah, the reverser appears to work as well so let's put it into forward uh, and uh, let's put it into gear so i'll use the controls here and let's move this train so there we go and we are moving the rev counter is working there and so is the speedometer so all looks well Yes, the horn will work when we've got the horn sound. That will be fine. So, yeah, everything looks okay. Now, uh, let's um, let's push that up. Uh, there we go. It's going to move the revs up to 800, which is where it tops out. And you can see it's just on that yellow bit. And if, if you wanted to, you could have it just going from there to there, basically, by altering that, uh, that minimum... Uh, position I've set the minimum of 375 to be here but you could set that to be naught and then 375 might be up here somewhere uh, but you can play about with that uh, but there we go 14.9 we're not getting any faster even though the uh, throttle is full on and it's saying 14.9 or 15 there so to go any faster we need to change gear normally when you are working with uh, gears on a train you normally drop the throttle off leave it for two seconds for it to drop down uh, to the idle speed change gear and then bring the throttle back up and there we go and it's starting now to uh, gain speed again so that's it all the controls they are working they're working uh, both uh, they should be working from the keyboard let me uh, there we go a and d on the keyboard is operating that uh, I, I'll, I'll stop it um, let me stop it uh, so there we go put the brakes on on the keyboard and that's working fine uh, as to i think the horn is is it h can't remember or is that that's headlight isn't it horn oh no it's space bar isn't it there we go space bar so the horns working there um and the gears are i think it's shift w or something like that i may be wrong or shift e and r yeah it's shift e there it is is it e and shift e yeah there we go so i've got keyboard control of the gears as well so everything's working fine uh, the uh, the controls are working fine with the mouse. They're working on the keyboard, and they're all working. So that is it. That is the end of this one. We'll now move on. We'll look at the uh, adding sound and headlights. Not going to go into too great a detail, but we'll had uh, we'll had <laughs> we'll add a sound <laughs> for the horn, and we'll just add headlights. <laughs> so with that, I'll see you in the next one.